And as a second to the last trading day of uh, this week, good morning, good evening, wherever the world you might be watching from this business morning, coming to you live from Channels HQ right here uh, in Lagos. Let's get to the top stories that set your agenda now, starting um, with the oil market. Uh, we've seen some kind of uh, bounce here with um, oil prices this morning, um, still below that $90 level that's for brent 87 dollars 39 cents barrel up 0.11 percent um this morning so we're seeing a lot of volatility uh, right now in the oil market um wti crude though that's about two cents this morning 82 dollars 71 cents a barrel losing that 85 um dollar uh, level that's for wti let's uh, get a check on the uh, crypto market now we see bitcoin uh, stock uh, around that uh, 61 thousand dollar level they taught 60 um, thousand yesterday is down 3.88 percent we're seeing uh pullbacks um across board uh, right now ethereum losing that three dollar three thousand dollar mark 3.51 percent um down bnb is down uh marginally 0.08 percent um this morning so we're seeing um red uh right there in the crypto market um this morning let's get to some other stories now we we'll see the central bank of nigeria has announced a reduction in the loan to deposit ratio for banks from 65 percent to 50% as part of its current monetary tightening strategy. This move um, outlined in the statement reflects the CBN's aim to align with a more contractionary policy stance. The adjustment in the LDR is a measure of a bank's liquidity and impacts the ability of the bank to extend credit to businesses and individuals from depositors' funds. By lowering the ratio, the CBN aims to moderate lending activities while promoting sound risk management practices within the banking sector. The Apex Bank says it will monitor compliance and adjust policies when necessary. Meanwhile, the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Olai Mikadosa, has been reacting to the views that the regulator's intervention in the foreign exchange market is responsible for the depletion of the country's foreign reserve. Mr. Kadosa was speaking at the session of the ongoing IMF World Bank Spring Meetings in Washington, D.C., says the CBN is working on policies to support the market and ensure stability of the exchange rate. Take a listen. What you've seen with respect to the shifts in our reserves is the shifts that you find in anybody's, in any country's reserve situation, um, where, for example, um, debts are due and certain payments need to be made. They are made because that is also part of keeping your credibility intact. And other times money comes in and, you know, takes it up again. And if you watch in the next couple of days, we've, I, mean, I think between yesterday and today, we had about 600 million US that came into the, into the reserves account. So I wouldn't let people get too excited about, about this thing. All I will say is that we are looking towards ensuring that we have a market that operates on its own, willing buyer, willing seller, and price discovery. That's where we're going to, the, the, the shifts you've seen in our reserves has really you know, little or nothing to do with defending any Naira, and that's certainly not our objective. Uh, Central Bank uh, Governor there clarifying on uh, matters there about the FX uh, market. But we we'll see uh, to our first uh, discussion now the impact of higher energy prices. Um, that's quite evident in the headline inflation for March. But there seems to be hope for um, lower diesel prices as the Dangote Petroleum Refinery slashed the price of diesel by 16% to 1,000 naira per litre from about 1,200 naira per litre. Joining us now is uh, Gide Pratt, COO. Iona, Nigeria, and a country pilot uh, manager at Trade Grid. Joining me right here in the studio. Great to have you. Good morning. Same here. Thanks, Vladi. Yeah, I'm sure you've seen the in inflation numbers uh, from food inflation hitting a, a new high of about 40%. Headline inflation also a uh, new high for that, too. Last time we saw that was, I think, 1997 or so. But um, energy prices do feed into, you know, these numbers we're seeing here. And looking at, you know, Dangote slashing this price, um, talk to me about how he's able to achieve this price. And uh, I guess this is not market forces at work. Price determination. So um, I think we need to put things in perspective. Why is the Dangote refinery able to cut down prices by as much as 100 naira? You must look at it that economies of scale come into the refinery. Anybody that is able to refine 19 million liters of gas oil 
on a daily basis can shape the market. There's no two ways around that. However, what he's going to do or what the refinery is going to do is have to take hedging options. They're buying crude. But every time they buy crude and they blend that into gas oil, they're trying to achieve an ex-refinery price that covers the cost of their operations. So assume that in trading, you have what you call a one book scenario. You keep on trading and you keep on achieving a weighted average cost. I believe the Dangote refinery is getting some efficiency levels based on volume, based on the new refinery in terms of efficiencies. And that is why they're able to, for want of a better way, translate that to the market. Do I believe they'll do this going forward? In the short run, yes. Um, in the long run, the prices will continue to adjust based on the fact that there's a crude input. And don't forget, he's trying to achieve an ex-refinery price that gives him, let me say, some margins. And then they'll be able to play in this market continuously, in my opinion. Right. And definitely we've seen the Naira, you know, strength, strengthen, you know, the first quarter of 2024. Um, how much of that is playing into how much um, the Dante refinery can actually sell you know, diesel to the market at this time. And I'm wondering, is there a risk that he cannot achieve this price if the Naira weakens again? So, so the answer to that immediate question is yes. Um, how positive has this been? It's been massive. So what it is, is that there are two factors that will convert into a landed cost, or shall I say an ex refinery price, the cost of your crude and your exchange rate. Um, just to dwell on that, I do believe that if the government is selling crude to the Dangote refinery in Naira, it takes out that, let me say, FX uncertainty. However, back to your statement, if it does go up and he still has a crude input, which is based on FX, then the exchange rate will obviously take the prices back up. There's no two ways around it. They're going to be a balancing act to be able to achieve the numbers they want. But don't forget, X refinery for him is really, really key because he must be able to get that price at the price where when they add their margins, it translates to what you call X depot. Um, X depot would obviously add their margins before it gets to what you call the retail play at the retail outlets. So that's, that's how it works technically. And, yeah. and we're seeing this, you know, play out for diesel, you know, at this time, but we know PMS, that's still hitting at, at the mm -hmm. pockets of, mm -hmm. you know, the average uh, consumer at this time. You know, talk to me about how we can actually get these energy prices down in the short to medium term. Okay, so short term, two things, and we've talked about the efficiency of the refinery. But you see, in trading, you need to just hedge. You're going to have to place your bet on a tomorrow price that you don't see today. So to hedge, you're going to take lots when it comes to gas oil. And let's stick to gas oil first. So it means that I want to take a 60-day pricing, but I want to take it today. Because of where I think the market is going, I can do that at this Dangote refinery. Because take it or leave it, I'm big enough to push the market. I'm big enough to guide the market. And we've talked about the efficiencies. So he's going to take forward positions on gasoline and gas oil. Right now, we're still doing the gas oil play. I think he's going to do the same for jet. But you see, once you can take those, what you can't control is the FX. Uh, I must say, Mr. Caduso seems to be doing a very good job, and he's gotten it right. So sustainability, if he can do this long term, then it means that those trading distillates or those refining can take more forward positions. Look at things like the FMDQ. If I want to take a hedge on FX, I can go to the FMDQ. The FMDQ guarantees a pricing for tomorrow again. It's like taking a hedge again, but everything is based on availability. FPI seem to be going up. If they can go up on a consistent basis, then it makes it easier for distillate traders. It makes it easier for the refinery to take short, medium, and long-term hedges based on what happens in the market. It's right. doable, in my opinion. And definitely, you know, we've, talk, we've heard um, talks about you know some kind of monopoly you know, happening here and, and looking at, um, you know, consumers, you know, struggling, you know, at this time, going ahead, we're expecting inflation to peak, mm -hmm. you know, at some point, but the issues, the issues are still there, the structural issues, you know, are still there, but we're hoping that it actually comes out. But is there a risk that, you know, that at some point, um, Nigerians might not be able to enjoy lower energy prices going forward, knowing fully well that this is one man controlling the market? So two things, um, and I think the FCCPC, and the NMDPRA, they need to do their jobs. If they feel that there's a price gouging effect, but that risk is always there. But in my opinion, I don't set up a refinery to take undue advantage of the market. I set up a refinery by scale to be able to make sustained margins and profit over a long period of time. He has debts to pay. 
So what he's going to do is try and look at the market and say, okay, how much of this can I push? Don't forget, vessels will load. He'll make some margins in terms of trading, using ice and all that. But trucks will also load from the gantry. So for me, if, number one, the government is able to give him crude in Naira and meet the domestic crude supply obligations in giving him crude, then we can sit down and have conversations around the fact that what is going into local should have, and not no margins, but should have deemed margin expectations because don't forget he's still selling to sub-saharan africa through vessels through barges but what is local there must be a way of ensuring that the dangote refinery modular refineries all get their crude as at when you that now shifts the dynamics in terms of monopoly so regionally where you have different uh, what you might call them mo modular refineries they're also able to take positions around those regions so that prices begin to drop as long as other factors of crude oil and um, what you may call it, exchange rates stay, let me say, constant. Right. And, and talking about the prices of crude oil, we're seeing uh, WTI, you know, sitting about $82 per barrel from about $85. Um, dollars. Uh, uh, over the weekend, every trader and investor was expecting some kind of, you know, tension, you know, when it comes to the oil market. See, some were already calling for $150, you know, Brent. Mm. But this time, it, it seems the risk premium, you know, that's been put aside, you know, at this time. But talk to me about how, um, you know, the, all, what we're seeing, you know, playing out in the global oil, oil market, how that impacts, you know, this uh, refinery, knowing that Dangote is, you know, buying WTI. Absolutely. So, I mean, crude oil always has triggers. Every distillate has triggers. So what is happening around Iran? is the trigger at this point. So immediately after the drone strikes on the, what you might call it, the embassy in Syria, you notice that there was an immediate upshoot in terms of prices. However, since the retaliation, quote and unquote, from Israel didn't happen, hasn't happened, and conversations around it are going on, then it seems that some more, let me say some safety expectations, and then prices are deeming back into where they need to be. However, if things escalate, laddie, it goes without saying. Premiums will go up. War risk in terms of freight and everything will go off. The Houthi situation around vessels has not been totally solved. So once those happen, then what you see is we're going back to a case where margins will be escalated, tensions will be escalated, and crude oil prices will go up. That will lead to higher prices anyhow we look at it. And looking at the, the technicals at this time, if WTI goes below that $82 level, what do you, what do you see the price next? Uh, you know, I always say this, I never use um, WTI or crude as an impact for derivatives. So it will be good to see where ice gas oils go. Where does ice gas oil go? If it goes down, I mean, top of my head today, you're looking at about 950 in terms of landing costs. And this is just a guesstimate based on what I know. Um, now, if those go up, then you're pushing towards 1,000. If those go lower, then you're moving towards 900 or 800 level. And I'm talking specifically to gas oil. Right. So yeah. definitely there is hope that we, we can have energy, low energy prices, you know, in Nigeria at some point, you know, with <laughs> war seen play out. Yeah, we've you know, always seen that, That's what out. the man on the street wants to know. We've you know? always seen playing out, laddie, yes. There's no two ways about that. But always remember, if this indices change, the same way it goes south could be the same way it goes north. Whoever manages the energy space for Nigeria, the president, they just need to sit down and keep on thinking about what are the positives we can take on the short run first, medium term next, and then long term. All right, let's look at the Seplat um, Exxon Mobil uh, deal. We did hear the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources say that Nigeria is losing over 400,000 yeah. barrels per day because this deal you know, has not been you know, completed um, yet. Talk to us about this and um, why it's stalling. So there's a lot of bureaucracy when it comes to oil and gas in Nigeria. Um, so let's leave what has happened in the past. The question is this. There was an executive order, 40, I believe, which the president signed into law. So what are some of the things that he's trying to do? If you notice, he's trying to shut down, or shall I say, shutting contract cycles from basically 36 to 48 months to six months. Those are global standards. So what it means is that if the NMDPR, for instance, you need NMDPR or NUPRC, you need an approval, they're supposed to get back to you within 14 days. In the event, in the event that they do, then it's deemed to be that they've given you approval. That's number one. If you also look at the contract sums that we're talking about now, prior to this, I think we were at levels of $500,000. Now that's been moved to 10 million. So it means that before you need to go back to seek approvals, 
it's a higher threshold. I think things like that will help prevent the mistakes that have happened with the Seplat deal. Um, community issues, all these have been left, in my opinion, for way too long. Executive Order 40 tries to address some of these things. But you see, it's not just having an executive order. If those are implemented along the lines that they need to be implemented, then what you see is that there will be some traction. But for me, it's really down to the Minister of Petroleum Resources. He needs to sit down and say, guys, I need this done. What are the things that are blocking this deal? Because it's okay to say how much we've lost. The question is that how much do we not need to lose between today, the next 30 days, the next 60 days, and the next 180 days? I'm sorry, he needs to sort that out. But I think the Executive Order 40 gives a framework to be able to solve some of these anomalies. So in your opinion, what do you see, what do you see this deal actually? In my opinion, if you can't push this to happen within the next six months, then we have a major problem. Right. So in more losses, opinion. you know, when it comes to barrels and we're, we're trying to get our output, you know, out at this time. Talk to me about 2024. What are you seeing for Nigeria's energy market? Okay. So let's be clear about one thing. We've gotten refining, quote and unquote, right. Um, what it is now is that if crude oil prices continue to stay along the levels it is. Don't forget, budget to now, we have a, uh, what you call it, we have a gain. Right. But what we need to do is that if we're still getting to, you notice that Angola has over, not Angola, uh, yeah, Libya. Angola, Libya has taken over in terms of barrels being produced. So what do we need to do? We still need to push to 1.7 million liters barrels a day. I think that if we do that on a sustainable basis, what it is is that you get some gains in terms of volumes, but you also get some gains in terms of margin. The outlook for me is good. But we need to get beyond policies. We need to get beyond statements and just do our jobs. If we get this, then the outlook for me is extremely good. It gives us something to build on till end of 2024 and even a better platform to build into 2024. Yeah, because we know a lot of people have left um, diesel. You know, ever since prices escalated, we've seen them actually drop to PMS, even though we know PMS. You know, still really expensive, but we do hope for the best. Yeah. Thank you so much. Great having you. I'm um, Jide Pratt, CEO, Ayanda Nigeria, and Country Pilot Manager, Trade Grid. Thanks Thank you so much. Lady. All right, let's get a check on the commodities uh, market now. We have uh, Dumebi Oluwole now. She's joining us um, right here in the studio, Senior Associate, Financial Derivatives Company. Great to have you, Thank um, you so Dumebi. Much. I'm sure you heard the previous conversation. Yes. It's all about uh, diesel. <laughs> and yes. how much the yes. refinery is getting out at a mm -hmm. thousand um, naira per, per liter, liter yes. you know, this time. And definitely this will have, you know, uh, uh, impact, you know, when it comes mm -hmm. to the commodities market. Yeah. But it is still expensive. Mm hmm Talk from where we're that. coming from right yeah you're, you're very right about that but I, I think it's best we look at what is happening now compared to what has been happening let's say um about six months ago so we've seen a significant increase in you know um energy prices to be very fair and that has affected you know logistics cost of transportation of food items and that has now fed into food prices and contributed significantly to inflation so what this means now is that we're getting diesel prices cheaper right and there's an increase in supply the expectation now is that if this continues the price of diesel could probably reduce even further if the supply is ample and you know this would start feeding into um transportation costs and um, logistics costs and even and possibly food items because um most of the trucks or practically all the trucks that bring food from you know other states into states like lagos um are, are, are diesel run so the expectation is that if the cost of diesel is reduced there are chances that you know this will also feed into prices but remember the conversation we had on tuesday where I, where i explained to you the lag effect all of these things does take time so today you might be seeing diesel prices trading at a thousand you know uh, for one thousand uh, uh, per liter and you still go to the market that tomato that you were buying you know for maybe uh, 60,000 naira per basket is still 60,000 naira per basket. It hasn't come down. And you just saw that truck coming from Lagos State and coming from maybe a Niger State into Lagos. And Buying you're wondering why is this not happening? Yeah, I, and you probably saw the, the, the truck, you know, getting refilled. I saw you. Why have you not, you know? So the thing is, it does take time. Um, it does take time for all of this to translate into, into lower commodity prices. And remember, diesel is just one function that's feeding into the price of food items. 
there are other things to consider. Remember that farmers are still struggling with a lot of insecurity that is affecting them um, producing. The planting season is also coming. It's also, you know, also in lieu. And that is also feeding into, into commodity prices. Uh, although there's a, there, there are positives happening with the Naira, um, or, uh, well, I mean, the Naira depreciated yesterday, but regardless, over the past few weeks, we've seen the Naira on a, on a positive trend. And that, that as well has also fed into prices. But still, um, point is, all of these things will take time to translate into a significant decline into in, in uh, uh, food prices. We might see prices slow, just like what we saw in the month-on-month -month inflation for uh, uh, March that I, I explained to you on right. Tuesday. Yeah, so we might see some, you know, like trickle down in prices, but it wouldn't be so significant. All well, it's quite time. interesting, you know, when you hear, you know, about, um, you know, when you heard about diesel prices, yes. you know, going up, mm -hmm. we saw the prices you yes. know, of commodities <laughs> move up, yes. you know, yes. immediately, and we, we didn't see that lag. Mm -hmm. You know, when it comes to, to price when pri increases. other prices yes. actually come down. So I'm wondering, um, when it comes to consumer protection, you mm. know, at this time, do yes. we force the sellers to say, you know what, we know maybe diesel prices have risen, you mm -hmm. know, at this time, but yes. there has to be a lag effect before your price goes up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, if, if, there, if, if those mechanisms were able to be in place, um, the expectation is that they should be because that's where social safety nets and consumer protection, like you rightly said, comes into play. Um, and, and this is where, in, in, for instance, in developed economies, when price shocks like that are supposed to happen, everyone is aware. So it, it, the consumer knows that in the next few days, the price of this particular item is going to increase. Not immediately. Not immediately. So that's where, that's the kind of process or progress that we need when it comes to uh, um, um, commodities markets in Nigeria. So that things to, to avoid, you know, sellers taking advantage of the, you know, sharp increase where you see artificial scarcity, you see hoarding, you go to the market today, they're selling one, two, just because they know that, ah, Naira has depreciated or they want to, you know, increase their price. And meanwhile, they've had that old stock and they're just trying to, you know, make a, uh, uh, um, abnormal profits but the thing is like you rightly said some level of consumer protection is supposed to be in place where these um, price increases either happen staggeredly or they happen with enough sensitization that people are aware that in the next few days price of this commodity is going to increase now what what that is supposed to hedge against is panic buying and the expectation is that this this announcements or um uh, price shocks however way they are going to happen everyone the, the government is very the government will do, do their, their due diligence to ensure that people are not scared that oh by that time oh there will not be any there, there won't be any products in the market everything is going so people obviously will take their time to increase so this happens a lot of times in a period of two weeks months even you know, um, for people to take advantage of it and uh, get enough stock in place before the price increases increases now happen. Um, the difference is that in a developing market like Nigeria, where businesses often do fight for themselves, it does take it. It, it will obviously take time for these things to to so so that's where fight for the, for comes the consumers in. at this time. Because exactly. how much can the average consumer actually, you know, actually take, take, on. take at this yes. time? Well, let's look at you know the CBN uh, right now. We did hear the governor mm -hmm. yes. actually say it, it's not the foreign reserves that are used to defend, you know, the Naira. Yeah. We saw the report mm. uh, from Bloomberg, Bloomberg showing yes. the relationship between um, the foreign reserves depletion mm -hmm. and the Naira strengthening. Yes. They're moving in the same, in the you know, same direction, direction at yes. this time. And I'm wondering, um, when the Naira was, you know, depreciating you know, before, we did see foreign reserves mm. actually decline. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference? Yeah. That's exactly, uh, I think, one of the things that we just need to take a few steps back to, to really analyze. The thing is, in times of economic crisis, it is expected that countries do draw down from their reserves to stabilize their currency, simply because markets do bet against the currencies in times of economic crisis. So what that period of um, support or intervention is supposed to do is stabilize the currency so much that these uh, um, negative shocks are not too much so that the investors that we want to bring in, the portfolio investors, the FDI investors, are able to bring their money in and they do know that to some level, right, um, the, 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 the monetary policy authorities are able to do the right things to keep the currency at a certain level, right, before their funds now come in to support. And then the government is able to, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, boost their reserves back. And if, if you notice, because again, I always like to use the, the Asia 1997 crisis to explain things like this. A lot of these countries did the exact same thing, even with the support of the IMF, right? So this is not new. 
But I guess the reason why Bloomberg is flagging this now is because of the rate of depletion in the foreign reserves. Depleting your reserves during an economic crisis is not wrong, right? But because of the rate of the decline in foreign reserves and the slow rate of increase in our export earnings, because right now it's somewhat like, okay, we're seeing oil production decline. So what that means is our export earnings from oil is going to decline. We're not producing enough cocoa to take advantage of the increase in cocoa prices globally. So what that means again is uh, uh, export or dollar earnings from another significant commodity might not be so much to boost you know, the reserves back. So what's going to happen now? But the thing is, let's also understand Nigeria is in a state of an economic crisis and the monetary policy authorities are doing what they can to solve this problem. So they need to keep the currency at a certain level. So these investors that we need to bring in will be able to bring in the capital that we need to further support the reserves. So while I understand the sentiments, I do not think it is something to panic about. Country, but but, but that kind of sentiment that and that kind of report by Bloomberg can cause panic. I mean, not to the people that understand the fundamentals of the market. Okay. To a layman, it does look like, oh my God, our reserves are, are, are being blown off. But that's not, that's not really the case. We have to look at the economies that are backing this up. And there is no need for any panic. What is happening is not wrong. It's not new. These things happen even to the biggest economies globally. And during times of economic, I mean, if, if it was such a big deal, the IMF did release a report, it would have been mentioned and mentioned in a very bad light. But that wasn't the case. So this is because things like this do need to happen in times of economic crisis. But what, do you, see, what time, do you see the foreign reserves in the short to medium term? I mean, in the short to medium term, obviously, this trend will still likely continue, but not by, I mean, now that it has been flagged. And I remember, you see, the Naira did depreciate. So what this means, it did affect market sentiment. And for the CBN to obviously anchor market sentiments positively, because there's such a thing, such a thing as exchange rate expectations. And if they do expect, expect the Naira to keep falling, foreign, foreign, foreign portfolio investors will be very cautious, and they wouldn't want to bring in funds. So the, obviously, the CBN has to now be cautious with this, come out with a statement and say, ex, ex, explain, be very transparent about what they are doing with the reserves, why the reserves are depleting, what measures they are putting in place to increase it even further. And this is where fiscal and monetary policy consolidation come into play. Fiscal authorities obviously have to do their part to ensure that the key sources of revenue for the country are actually increasing. Things like oil theft and vandalism, we should not even be talking about it anymore. Because that is a key revenue for Nigeria. We cannot sideline that anymore. Whether or not we are trying to diversify the economy, we need to remember that right now the country is still very dependent on oil. And oil prices are high. So meaning that Nigeria should be benefiting from that. But that's really not the case at least in dollar terms. In Naira terms, we've been seeing FAC increasing significantly. To tell you that, okay, yes, in Naira terms, we're making a lot more. But in dollar terms, we're not. And this is where fiscal authority needs to come in. All the pressure can't keep going to the monetary policy authorities. Right. And I'm not an advocate for the CBN, but we cannot, we, we, we can't keep uh, uh, pointing fingers and then when they're trying to do the right things here in terms of adjusting and actually being, being on the path. So with this new law for the foreign reserves, you think it might stay this way? I, I do think so. I, I do think so for the for the time being. Right. For the time being. But then again, not it's, go it's, it's not, it's, even even if it does, I don't think it will go it will, it will go past uh, uh, um, 32, okay. 32 uh, right. we'll, dollars we'll, per we'll barrel. We'll keep we'll keep tracking. We'll keep watching the that. reserves. Exactly. You know, at <laughs> exactly. this point. Yes. Thank you so much, uh, yes. Maybe uh, It was great having your perspective. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for having me. Thank you. All right, so yeah, that, that's it. And uh, definitely it's the second to last trading day of the week. We did see the bull make an appearance for the local boss. Uh, that was uh, yesterday. Uh, we're going to see if uh, we're going to get another appearance uh, today and maybe for the final trading day um, tomorrow. So that's how it's uh, playing out uh, for today. That's, uh, that's how money is performing. And we'll get more updates later on on Business Incorporated to see how the global market's actually playing out. Uh, thank you for watching. I'm Ladi Williams. Um, I have things uh, back over now to the Sunrise Daily Team.